Welcome back to the greenhouse. Today we're discussing a little solar heater that has been on the back burner for quite some time now. We had it set up as a true solar heater. Now we are using the sun, taking it, transferring it into electrical energy and basically running a 100% solar powered heater. Now, if that sounds interesting, please consider subscribing to the channel. So let's jump right into this. To avoid freezing up and blowing out a closed system like this, we have to use some type of coolant or something that is going to allow the expansion of frozen water or we don't allow the expansion of frozen water by not letting it freeze. So we have to create our own coolant. So in this container this thing's warm because we've got our heating element so in this little pump here i'm going to discuss the whole system as a whole but we've got this fluid in here and it looks a little cloudy and that is because we're sitting with 33 percent vegetable glycerin and 66 percent water and that drops the freezing point of the solution to about negative 40 c or negative 40 Fahrenheit. so we have a little heating element with these red wires here so we've got ourselves this little heating element down here now this little guy runs between 30 and 100 watts so if you don't have a full 100 watts you can still get some heat to it now this guy is well, in front of the camera here 12 volt 300 watts this is going to require at least four solar panels to operate properly now this little guy will run off one solar panel so we have one of those in here. We've tested this out with little mason jars and stuff to see how fast we could get this little heating rod to heat up a little pot of water here. So we're sitting at 108 degrees, 105, 108, and it's not flowing. I turned everything off. So that is our fan switch. So we are drawing through that radiator system with these fans, turn them on, turn them off pretty simply. All right, now, We've got our water pump, which is controlled by this little motor speed controller. And once I click that on, we've got hot air blowing out of these fans almost immediately. Yes, so we drained all that water and at a good flow, you can see bubbles forming in there on the heating element itself as it's creating heat. So we are allowing this with a timer back there, like I stated, to build up heat. I've got this dang pole in my way. It's hard to film right here, but I need the pole here to protect all of our little tomatoes. So with this little heater, we are able to achieve some decently warm temperatures inside this little tunnel. Now, this little water pump here, you can see in and out. So the out, pushes it through all of these and it comes back up and that hose will run back in to fill up the tank again. So it's constantly flowing out of that and being sucked up by this tube in the bottom here. And it's going right back to the pump and through our system and we've created a nice small thermal mass, yes, but it creates a ton of heat in here and it keeps the ventilation going. So we've got good airflow in here. We killed the power from this. So we are running two solar panels. We had hooked up an extra solar panel just to operate and haphazardly hook up our heating element. And then our other hookups are back here. So this is all of my wiring so I could hook all of those systems together and just power them simply with solar power. And as stated, I run the fans and pump on a timer. So this reservoir, so when I shut the pump off, that reservoir fills back up with any excess water that's above it in the system. And it starts to really crank back up in heat. So we're sitting 88 86 degrees so we're pulling that heat off pretty significantly and throwing it into this little greenhouse when it's closed here and i'm going to close this whole area in and show how this is operating so the end pretty well cinches up and i can pinch it closed we have a nice sealed little sprouting section and i'm just going to build upon what i'm finding with this this is pretty darn cool and we haven't had any freeze up issues i mean it hasn't been that cold like no zero negative temperatures or anything so having a large system like this with a nice 300 watt heating element and maybe like five solar panels to operate systems and 
be able to power the heater, I could do a decent sized drum, like our 100 watt solar heater. We got a heating element in that tank. I'll be doing a separate video on the heating elements themselves because it takes a significant amount of energy to be able to heat and i didn't want to cover it in this video because i'm going to have to get on the computer and go to a website and we will check out how much energy it's going to require for how much water over how much time it's a great free resource that i'd like to share with everybody on a video but i'll do that on its own as we discuss more solar powered heating systems so we've got all of our crops in here doing well getting a little dry but all of the moisture that's contained in here this large tank is catching some good energy from the sun and when we have it all closed together all of the heat we're pushing in is just absorbed into the seed trays and into the soil so with this system itself we've got two 12.5 watt fans and a 10 watt water pump so we've got about 35 watts or so that we're drawing off of one, two, three. Those are all connected in the back like I've shown. So one solar panel can easily handle that load with a decent battery. So you should be able to operate that for a good amount of time. Now this heating element is the major drain and that's directly hooked to a solar panel, no bank or anything. So that will be the most significant part about that is just basically hooking up a battery bank that can suffice a heating element for a little bit of time and obviously scaling this up a lot larger so there is a ton of potential for these heating elements so this is the ultimate sprouting on a budget i mean i probably spent a hundred dollars putting that solar heater together with all of the parts and components minus solar panels but Everything is pretty well sealed up here. I don't have it 100% pulled, but so if you look, we've got this just basically strung up between it. We can just pinch all this up all the way down, but we've got crops down in here. We've got little sprouts coming up in this entire bed underneath. We'll be able to prick out and pot up for customers. Just tons of life in the greenhouse. Some of these flowers are actually popping already. Pretty cool to see some flowers when everything else is so brown and desolate. You can also eat them inside our greenhouse. Plenty of thermal mass, plenty of moisture. Even tomatoes are sprouting in here. We put these in here a couple days ago. So it's good to see all of those sprouts coming up, seeking the sun. There's actually quite a bit it's a good success rate for using an experimental solar heater and it kind of feels cool in here because all of this air that's constantly moving in the moisture but it's warm air also so we are doubling down and really reworking this solar system where we used to have this thing hooked up to a box outside with sand and copper and we used to run the same solution through it because when we mix the vegetable glycerin and the water at 33 and 66 percent respectively we are lowering the specific heat of the water and the solution becomes a little bit thicker so it's able to pick up heat easier and it still has a high specific heat so we're able to get a gel-like liquid that still has a continuity of thick water so it's able to move through the system but it doesn't really bubble and it picks up the heat and is a great heating solution for this where we need something that won't freeze, but it will carry heat very well. So let's get out of this thing. I'm like inside the tent and it actually feels pretty darn good in there. It's not bad. It's pretty chilly outside. I got the door open and being out here in a t-shirt, it's a little brisk. So this little heater is pretty inspiring. I wanna take some more data and just observe it myself. And then I wanna design a larger system with obviously a larger solar bank. So it's a little bit of investment. But if I can secure this entire end of the greenhouse's heating throughout the entire winter with one investment. So it is a little bit of work, a little bit of invested money, but it is well worth it if you get a system set up that provides for you and autonomously, that's the best part right there. So with that, I will let you guys go and see you in the next video. Thanks for checking out our little solar heater.